Hi, I'm Christian Brindle, and welcome to the Everything Medicare Podcast. What's up, everything, Medicare, Podcast Nation? This is Christian Brindle. Wherever you are and however you might be listening to me today, thank you so much for taking the time. Every single week, I bring you three podcast episodes where we discuss your Medicare, your Medicaid, your Social Security, and everything that has to do with that golden age called retirement. If you're unfamiliar with who I am, folks, my name is Christian Brindle. Like I said, I own an insurance agency just outside of Salt Lake City, Utah called Christian Brindle Insurance Services. Um, I've published three books about the topic of insurance, two specifically about Medicare, newest one being the insurance funnel, nine simple tests every insurance policy must pass before purchase. It's on the market right now on Amazon.com. Folks, I have screamed, yelled, hollered, stomped my feet, whatever you would like to call it, about misinformation on this podcast and this platform ever since the beginning. We are getting closer and closer to our two-year mark since we started the show. And when we first started the show, I particularly was not coming out with nearly close to as many episodes as we have done in the past year or so. And and we've done so because of you. I've said this because of the beginning. I've, I've said this, excuse me, since the beginning. You, the audience, drive this bus, folks. You determine how often we do the show. You determine what we're going to talk about on the show based on your questions. And you determine if the show will even be done another day because, let's face it, folks, folks, if um, if nobody was listening to the show, we wouldn't keep doing the show. It wouldn't make a whole lot of sense, right? But we keep doing the show because the audience grows week in and week out, and we reach a lot of people. And um, I love that because I think that it's something that's very important and something that doesn't get talked about enough. And Obviously, there's a huge, huge interest in um, correct Medicare information out there, and that's why we continue to do the show. But when we started out, folks, we were doing one every one every two weeks. We we kind of started doing it once a week, and then it turned from once a week to twice a week, and then twice a week transitioned to three times a week. And this was all based off of your requests, the audience, your um, overwhelming, if you will, asking. For me to do the show more frequently. In fact, we have had some people that have said, Christian, do the show every day. And I said, no, that's where I draw the line. Because we're an insurance, I've said it before and I'll say it again. We're an insurance agency. We're not a radio station or anything like that. Um, It's difficult enough for us to bring you three shows a week and stick to our very, very hectic schedule. Um, while at the same time, taking care of our clients, taking on new clients, running our insurance agency, um, everything we do with the books. the YouTube channel, et cetera, et cetera. So, but that being said, there's nothing that gets under my skin more um, than fake information and false information about Medicare specifically. And it seems like this topic particularly that I'm going to be discussing with you today has more false information floating around about it than anything else. And that is, when is Medicare primary And when is Medicare secondary? It's amazing how difficult that question is to answer for some people. You know, I mean, people will call insurance companies. People will talk to agents. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. 92% of agents are out of the business in three years, which means that chances are your work, your agent and the agent you've been working with has been in this business under than three years. And that, in my opinion, is kind of scary because I think there's so much to know. It takes time to kind of learn stuff. It doesn't mean that you should never go with a new agent. I mean, if that was the case, there would never be another successful person in this business again because they couldn't get any customers or clients because nobody would want to work with them because they're now. But what I am saying, folks, is this. The false information is at an all-time high. I think it's worse now than it's ever been. Um, because, but, but it's also easier to call it out because I have platforms like this. There's other people that have platforms that they can call out false information on. Um, when is Medicare primary and when is it secondary? 
It's a really, really simple question to answer, but for some people, it's so difficult. Um, you know, I've encountered people in the last week even that have said they've, you know, contacted their particular insurance company. The insurance company tell them one thing that's completely false. I tell them another, but they want to believe the insurance company. So we have to get documentation from that insurance company and from Medicare, Medicare's website, Medicare.gov, and show it to them to say, oh, um, yeah, here's the rules with this. Here's how this works with this. False information can be really, really dangerous, and some false information can be more dangerous than others. Um, I think that, you know, we as people, we as human beings are in a search for the truth in whatever it is that we are trying to learn about. <coughs> Excuse me. I do not have the coronavirus. Um, we as people are, are searching for truth, right? Um, and there's so many people that say, you know, the news medias, whether it be CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, they, I mean, a lot of, not all of them, you know, have the same viewpoint, but they report very different stories and they report the same stories very differently. Um, people want the truth and people want the truth with religion. That's why we have thousands of religions in this, in this world today, folks. I mean, you think about religion particularly, and you really think in my eyes, you know, up until a couple of years ago, I thought there was Christianity, of course, uh, Catholicism, Scientology, maybe, Mormonism, because I live in Utah, um, atheism, I guess you could call that a, a religion. I, I put it in there because I think it's a belief system, right? Um, who else is there? You know, I mean, there's, there's others I'm sure that I'm missing, but... Oh, uh, Islam, of course, how can I forget Islam, Hinduism, things like that. But there are thousands of different religions that we don't hear about. Now, am I saying any particular religion is false or whatever thing like that? No, I'm not saying that. I, you know, I'm not saying anything of the kind, but what I am saying is they can't all be right, right? Not every single viewpoint can be correct and accurate. They contradict each other, Right? Regardless of what you believe in, they contradict each other. There's no way they can all be right. In order for one option to be correct, option B needs to be false when it comes to religion. And there's no different with Medicare and Medicare information. When does Medicare act as primary? And when does Medicare act as a secondary? I have to take a quick break. But in segment two, I will answer that question for you. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks so much for sticking with me through that break. Let's get in to this topic here today. The topic is, when is Medicare primary and when is Medicare secondary? This is really, really simple. And if anyone tells you anything different, they're lying. There's two scenarios when someone's on Medicare. When they're employed and they have coverage through that employer currently. I'm not talking about if you have a retirement plan and it's not through your current employer, it was through another employer. And No. If you're working and you have coverage through that employer currently, and it's deemed credible coverage in the eyes of Medicare. Most group plans are. Option two is you're on Medicare and you're not working. You're retired and you have a retiree program or a Medicare supplement or whatever the case might be. Or let's say you're working, but you have coverage through a um, previous job. It, point blank, folks. Point being... The coverage isn't through your current employer, basically. Medicare is always primary if you're retired and you have a retiree program or if you have a Medicare supplement. Easy. Medicare is primary. Whatever else you have is secondary, whether it be TRICARE for life, whether it be a federal employee's government program whether it be CHAMP VA, whether it be a retirement program, or whether it's just a Medicare supplement through an XYZ insurance company, let's say, for example. 
Medicare is primary. Medicare is secondary. If you're working, you're on Medicare, you're, but you're working, you have coverage through your current employer, then Medicare is secondary and the work insurance is primary. Easy, right? This is not so hard, but we make it hard because the peop- a lot of people that work at these insurance companies don't know and half, you know, half of what they should know about Medicare. So people call up, they're given false information. It's terrible. I've dedicated my life to knowing everything I possibly can about Medicare. I've read books about Medicare that were not written by me. I've written books about Medicare, done extensive research to make sure I get every single fact correct. We've done this show. Don't think I had to do a little bit of research to do 170 episodes of this show? You better believe I did. And just keep this in mind. It's very, very simple. Again, I'll say it one more time. If you're working and you have coverage through your employer currently, but for some reason you also have Medicare, remember you can postpone Medicare due to that case. So I don't know why someone would have it unless they wanted to be double covered, but that's a story for another day. Medicare would be the secondary and then work insurance would be primary. But if you're retired and you have a retiree plan, you have a Medicare supplement, you have whatever, Medicare is primary and then whatever program you have other than that is secondary. Okay, easy, easy, easy peasy, folks. Very simple question that I just felt like we needed to address. But folks, this episode is going to be a lot shorter than our our normally scheduled program, typically because there's just not a whole lot that needs to be said about this topic. But it is something that I thought would be helpful to have an episode about. I've said it from day one. I think our podcast is designed to be a library of any question you can possibly have about Medicare, and you can go through it and find an answer. Before we know it, we'll have a thousand episodes and we're never going to run out of things to talk about because Medicare is ever changing. Medicare has so many things that you need to know. Um, and I will always be passionate about bringing you the best Medicare information as much as I can. Folks with everything going on with, um, the coronavirus and everything in our country, it's more important now than ever to make sure that you have the best Medicare plan you can have. If you live in the States of Utah, Um, Idaho, Colorado, Oregon, Texas, South Carolina, Virginia, and Florida, and soon to be California. Um, One of these days, we'll we'll have everything wrapped up in California. Again, that's um, Utah, Idaho, Colorado, Oregon, Texas, South Carolina, Virginia, and Florida, and soon to be California. If you live in one of those states, and you're either turning 65, and you're just lost and not sure what to do, or maybe you're already on Medicare, and you're not just sure if you have the best plan for you, give my office a call. I'd hate for anybody to have contract the disease or get sick with something else and not be covered as well as they possibly could be, and they don't even know it. Our office number is 801-255-5340, 801-255-5340. Give us a call during the week. We're just located outside of Salt Lake City, Utah, and um, I'd be more than happy to talk with you and we'd be happy to help you. Worked with a lot of people um, in a lot of different places, and we'd love to work with you too if you feel like we, we can help. Thanks so much for taking the time, folks. Really appreciate spending some time with you. We'll be back with another episode, a longer episode on Saturday. Take care.